Golf Central on YouTube is brought to you by the new Paradigm Woods and Irons from Callaway. Hello, I'm Matt Adams, and this is your Golf Central update. Riviera Country Club is hosting the Genesis Invitational this week, part of a big year for Los Angeles area golf. The U.S. Open will be at nearby L.A. Country Club in June. Riviera hosted the 1948 U.S. Open, won by Ben Hogan. The 1998 U.S. Senior Open, won by Hale Irwin in two PGA Championships. Of course, Tiger Woods is teeing off for the first time since July and he's in a big group that goes out at 3.04 p.m. Eastern alongside of Rory McIlroy and Justin Thomas. Rory addressed the media earlier today. I don't think there was much to learn out there this morning. Cold, windy. Um, thankfully, most of us have, have, have played Riviera quite a lot. So um, nothing really new to, to learn when you come back. But, uh, yeah, conditions were pretty tough out there this morning. And, you know... Looks like the weather forecast is going to improve as the week goes on, so uh, hopefully that's the, the last of, of the wind that we have to deal with. Perfect. Ladies and gentlemen, just use the mic and step in line, and we'll start with Dan. Yesterday, Tiger was saying that he, he can't fathom being a ceremonial golfer, that once he feels like he can't win, whether that's a rational belief or irrational belief, he, he can't wrap his head around just being out there for fun. As someone who's, you know, you could potentially be one of those future guys, ambassadors of the game, do you, do you see yourself hanging around doing the ceremonial tee shot? Like, or do you feel the same way where it's like, if I can't win, what's the point of being out here? Uh, um, the answer that I want to give you is that I love the game enough to be okay with being a ceremonial golfer, but I don't know if my competitive drive in this game, I'm not a very competitive person. Like I, I only really am competitive in golf, but I don't know if that competitive drive towards this game would let me be happy not contending to win golf tournaments. That, that to me is a pretty frustrating place to live when your entire career you've strived towards trying to win golf tournaments. I mean, if I... If I want to play golf, I can play it at home with my friends and my family and enjoy it that way. I don't think you'd need to struggle in front of thousands of people to, to enjoy the game of golf. So um, I'd sort of be in a similar, a similar boat to Tiger in, in that regard. But isn't it sort of like a rite of passage? I mean, Jack and Arnie, those guys all hung around and Gary Player, they've hung around the game forever. Yeah, I mean, I think you know Tiger will still hang around the game forever. You think about his presence, you think about what he's doing in terms of hosting, like he'll host this event, hopefully, you know, for, for a lot of years. Uh, I'm pretty sure he'll still turn up to the Champions Dinner at Augusta. I'm pretty sure he'll, you know, he'll be involved in the game, whether it be his investment of entities that are sort of to do with the game of golf and, and trying to be an ambassador and trying to bring the game into the 21st century with some of the stuff that we're trying to do as well. So, you know, still, being around golf and making his presence felt doesn't necessarily have to mean hitting the golf ball in tournament play. Hey, Rory. Last week, you lost your number one spot in the world rankings, unfortunately. Is that something that you really care about, or is it just something that you kind of dust over? Because you are still playing good golf. Thank you. <laughs> uh, <laughs> I... Uh, yeah, of course I care about it. I think it's a really cool thing to be ranked number one in whatever you do. Um, but I think it just goes to show the level of depth and the level of talent that's out here that I literally have one average week. It wasn't even a bad week, just an average week. And there's always someone waiting in the wings to, to overtake you or to, to come and try to take that mantle from you. So um, I think it's a great thing for the game. The fact that, you know, there's always someone there waiting to... Um, you know, take the title away from you. So, you know, I've got a chance to get it back this week. And, um, you know, hopefully it's a bit of a sort of hot potato uh, thing where me, Scotty, and John sort of pass it around a little bit because it means we're all playing great golf. Yeah, along those lines, do you think it's going to be musical chairs at the top spot for a while, or can somebody cement it? I mean, I don't, I don't see Scotty or Rambo going away, and, and I certainly don't plan to either. And... Um, Obviously, you've got so many other guys in there that, that would have a chance to sort of be up around that conversation as well. So I just think with the way 
the game is right now and and just sort of how we play and it's just it's becoming harder and harder to separate yourself from from the field so you know it, it seems like it's been that way for the last basically since since Tiger was in his in his heyday that you know that number one spot sort of been passed around a little bit between us all the best players should be playing in them because ultimately the PJ Tour needs to be built around the best players because that's what will maximize the value of the product. Um, but that doesn't mean that there's not great storylines further, you know, down that list, which, you know, we're all very cognizant of. Like, I've, I've had tons of conversations with guys that are worried about what events they're going to play next year and all that. And, like, the one thing I said, I'm like, we're not, like, no one's trying to screw the bottom half of the tour here. If anything, we're trying to lift it up. We're trying to, like, if you have a, you know, a product, I hate calling it a product, but a product that this year is forecasted to do $2 billion in gross revenue. Like you're trying to grow that product as, as much as possible. So the way I've tried to describe it is, if you look at like the NBA's growth trajectory over the last 20 years, they've built that league around their best players and their stars, not around the 12th guy on the team. But because they've built that league up around the stars, the 12th guy in the team does way better than he used to. So that's sort of the way I've been trying to tell it. Like, does it mean that the tour is going to get more competitive? Yes. Does it mean that, you know, instead of, you know, the way that you even look at the new look at the playoffs, like 125 used to make the playoffs, now it's 70. You know, it's just becoming a more competitive product. And I think, honestly, that's, that's a good thing. I think if you look at where we've historically been, so whenever the, the WGCs were still a thing, we had four of those. Um, we had the the two playoff events. Now that's went to three. So say that, so that's two. So that's six. And then you had the you know the two fall events, um, CJ and Zozo. So that you know so we, historically we've had tournaments that haven't had cuts, and there wasn't really any grumbling about it before Liv came along, right? Like that sort of. So I think you're going to see a mixture of both. To um, to be honest with you, I think some tournaments more than others lend themselves to to maybe having having cuts and trying to um, keep some sort of history here. Like we're, look, we're at the old LA Open that has a ton of history here. You know, is this an event that maybe should keep a cut going forward, potentially, because of the history of it? Um, so like we're thinking about all that sort of stuff. You know, we're, there's, there's, there's a ton of conversation around it. It's worrying about the product ever hard to balance with your primary occupation, which is hundred percent winning golf I, I, I sort of needed to go off the grid for a few weeks in December. Um, part of the reason I didn't play Hawaii, I just didn't feel like I was ready to go out there and play golf again. I just needed to reset and sort of, yeah, look, it was a, it was a busy year for me. I had a ton of stuff going on. Um, but I sort of knew going into this year that it was sort of going to be Maybe not quite a repeat of last year, but there's still a lot of stuff that needs to be decided. And, you know, for better or for worse, I'm part of that conversation. I'm on the board of the tour and I, you know, I, I need to be a part of it. So, um, yeah, like, would I love to just get back to playing golf at some stage? Absolutely. Um, but hopefully after this year and the schedule step for 24 and beyond and we sort of get everything else in place, you know, then hopefully I will be able to go back and, and concentrate on the day job a little more. Not that I don't concentrate on it, but, you know, a lot of my extra time is taken up with a lot of this stuff.